all depend on USB in our daily computing lives, and the introduction of USB 4 is bringing us huge advancements in what we can do with it. The USB Implementers Forum, or USB IF, is a nonprofit organization, or corporation, I should say, founded by the gr a group of companies that developed the Universal Serial Bus specification. USB IF doesn't make any products, and they don't speak for any of the hardware vendors, but rather they facilitate the development of USB peripherals and promote the benefits of the products that have passed compliance testing. With that preamble, I'd like to introduce two people to you, the USBIF's chairman, Brad Saunders, and Ramal Ismail, the USBIF chief technology officer. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I told these guys that they could get down and nerdy with me. So, uh, you know, buckle up, everybody. We're going to have some fun. <laughs> All right, Depends so, on where your subject matter goes, of course. <laughs> right, right. Well, so we know we're supposed to be excited about USB 4, but I think it's fair to say that most of us are probably under misconception, misconceptions about what USB 4 is and what it's not. Can you clarify this for us? What is USB 4? Okay, so let me give you a very brief background. So we all grew up with USB 2, the original USB, um, and then uh, super speed USB came out. And of course, that's associated with a spec that people know as the USB 3 standard. And for super speed USB, it brought a lot more speed than USB 2. We had 5 gigabit and 10 gigabit and 20 gigabit eventually. And please note, 20 gigabit USB required the USB type C connector. And super speed USB brought the ability to have data go both in and out of the computer at the same time. So much faster, plus it was bi-directional and data transfer. USB 4 though is a new architecture is on top of that. And in fact, it's complementary to those two technologies. USB 2 exists in parallel to USB 4, just like it did uh, in parallel to super speed USB. But USB 4 now takes the um, super speed USB and includes that protocol as one of some of the tunnels that it uses over the new, over the USB type C cable and connector. So USB 4 brought this ability to merge data communications as a separate tunnel from normal uh, sorry, display communications. So if you're trying to drive a display, you can do that in parallel to uh, exchanging data. So now everybody has probably heard that USB 4 is um, a, another version, or at least based on what Intel delivered a few years back called Thunderbolt 3. So what happened was the Intel architecture for Thunderbolt 3 was contributed to the USB group. And we developed USB 4 to do essentially the same architecture, which is display and data in parallel. And it allows us to manage the bandwidth of the two. The data itself is super speed USB. It's our friend. It's just now being carried in one of the uh, tunnels across the interface. Okay, so the, the reason you're, you're uh, focusing on uh, data and display at the same time is if you have a single cable going from your computer to a display to devices that are hooked up to it, then you can, you, you'd be able to say write to a disk while sending video to a display. Absolutely. Okay. Yes, exactly. Okay. So here's the motivation. When we developed the USB Type-C solution initially, we were taking this older style standard A connector and now making it a nice, simple, small, easy to plug in. Reversible. Reversible. <laughs> Flippable. Yay. <laughs> Yay, yeah. So <clears throat> as we did that, computers still had a lot of connectors. Um, one of the other things we did in parallel with that, of course, is also deliver more power over that connector. So now the notebook computer was saying, oh, great, I got data and power, but I still have a bunch of other connectors on there. What are my opportunities to reduce the number of connector types on my product? The one that really stuck out was display, right? 
HDMI, mini display port, those various connectors. That is really what brought about the kind of early technology associated with this, which is the DisplayPort alternate mode, and of course, Thunderbolt, which both chose to optimize trying to bring data and display out of the same connector. So I, um, I do want to, I, I want to make you pause there a little bit because okay. I've just happened to this week been learning a little bit about this uh, display port alternate thing mm -hmm. because I have a, an older display port uh, uh, Apple display and I wanted to plug it into a PC that's got HDMI and that's a, that's a no bueno. It, and it, it, I did a post, uh, I think after I talked to you guys once before entitled um, just because it fits doesn't mean it'll work. And I knew I could get all the connectors together to plug it in, but I discovered that it didn't matter. I would have to spend a lot of money to make it actually do something. Yes. So, so DisplayPort alternate is some other technology? So the simple way to look at this is in the computer PC world, and I include Macs as PCs. Yes. Um, in that world, DisplayPort technology is the predominant interface for external monitors. In the consumer electronics world, it's HDMI, TVs, mm. right? Right. And right. in certain notebook brands, they kind of cross over because uh, take a major notebook OEM, they cater some of their notebooks to business users, computer mm. types. Hence, they have display port connectors. Okay. Or same company sells very similar computer to a end user who has televisions and the thing they put an HDMI interface on it. So it turns out you can bridge from DisplayPort to HDMI very, very easily. And as such, you'll find a lot of little adapters, dongles, yeah. which are USB type C they actually do display port alternate mode at the interface and then they have an HDMI connector on the end. Right. I, all I wanted was the other way around. Well, that one's not commonly available, I'm afraid. <laughs> well, I did find for about $100 I could get an active powered device that would do it, but right. that it's doing all the math apparently. There's in the reverse direction, I don't think it's quite as easy. Yeah, but Okay. It turns out DisplayPort alternate mode adapters to HDMI is a major sell, a major, you know, volume seller in that little dongle. Um, but that said, um, most home users that are going out and buying new displays through their home offices, they're getting a DisplayPort oriented display, or better still, one that has USB Type C connections directly on it. Yeah, it seems that USB Type C is really starting to take off in displays now. Um, I just had uh, interviewed ViewSonic where they were showing off all of their USB C uh, displays, and it just—I mean—that just brings joy to your heart when you see that. What when you have a USB C display and USB C USB uh, Type Type C—that's the shape of the connector. Mm -hmm. USB Type C on a on a laptop. What is the protocol that's going across that? Is that Display Port? Is it? Uh, HDMI? No, it, in, in most cases today, it is DisplayPort using what we call the DisplayPort alternate mode, which is, by the way, the specification for that, if you're techie, it was written by the organization that owns the DisplayPort technology, which is the VESA, the VESA organization. And they worked with us to, to coordinate on being able to use a protocol we put in USB type C that allowed for it to switch into this alternate mode. Okay. Now Thunderbolt happens to be another alternate mode, right? Thunderbolt is the one that was invented by Intel and marketed by Intel to be, again, do display and data at the same time. And to be techie still, Thunderbolt 3 tunnels, remember I mentioned tunneling, DisplayPort technology and PCI Express technology. PCI Express 
is traditionally seen as an inside the computer interface. That's a data right. interface. The old the old card slots in the big tower PCs. Right. Those were PCIe. And that technology brought those two together, and it allowed you to connect displays and external technology that was compatible with PCI Express. And in the Thunderbolt 3 solution, one of those technologies happened to be a USB host controller, the ability to then send USB connectivity downstream of a Thunderbolt dock. They do it by putting a PCI Express based host controller. Now here's the difference, USB 4. Now remember they've, we've donated, we've, we, if I put my Intel hat on, I, we donated to the USB community the underlying technology of Thunderbolt and in fact made it an open standard by doing such. But this is USB technology after all. So the data interface became the super speed USB data interface. So USB 4 can actually tunnel three types of data, display port data, super speed USB, which is our favorite, and of course, it can also uh, tunnel PCI Express. Part of the reason for doing that was to help maintain backward compatibility, of course, to the existing uh, Thunderbolt ecosystem. Okay. All right. Um, well, I understand why most of us are confused because that was a lot. <laughs> that was a lot of information. So, if 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 your your elevator speech on USB, what USB four is, what would the, what would the short version of that be? Okay. It obviously adds higher performance over super speed USB because now we have 40 gigabits per second. It, instead of just being USB data only, it's display and data. And again, display port is the interface for the display and USB is the interface for data. And then of course, PCI Express could optionally be used as well in parallel. So it tunnels all the same all that content over one connection. And the third thing that's kind of important is it manages the bandwidth between them okay. to make a nice effective solution for the user. You know, balance your display performance with your data performance and so forth. Does all that negotiation for yeah. you. Okay, okay, I like that. That was good. I liked all the depth and then I liked narrowing it down to, to the pieces, but that got us there. That's great. So, all right, we're sold on USB 4, okay? I'm I'm a believer now. I'm this. I need this. This is fantastic. How would a normal human know? Well, not even a normal human, but one of us. How would we know if a computer or peripheral has USB four, since they're all USB Type C connectors with all these other options? How would we know? Yeah, that's that's a good question. Um, but on the other hand, for most users, it turns out you don't really need to know, but. So let me be clear first that when you connect two things together, the protocol we have behind USB type C does its very best to get you the best connection you can get based on you know, the common capabilities between two things. So you know, if it's only USB two capable, but it's a USB 4 host, you get USB 2, right? Okay. And, I'm and by the host, it. you mean the computer. Is that correct? Right. If it's uh, super speed USB, you get super speed USB. If it's USB 4, of course, on both sides, you get the best of both worlds, right? You get the best. Now, obviously, there's a cable in the middle. <clears throat> so you need to have a cable that does more than USB 2. There are, there are USB type C cables that are USB 2 only. They're kind of popular in the phone and charging space. That was going to be one of my questions was, uh, my following question was mm -hmm. going to be, how would, how would we know if the cable we have is, I mean, I've, I've got piles of USB-C <laughs> cables here. I'm, they're all over my desk right now. I've got them right. everywhere. How do I know which ones are going to do USB 4, only USB 2? Correct. So <clears throat> USB IF has always had a cable marking icon. Um, and I have to, to say that the, 
the industry at large has hit and miss on whether it uses this icon properly on your cable. Okay. <laughs> we, as an organization, we can't absolutely mandate it that it get used. And in, interestingly enough, some of the decisions made to not use it are by people who think they're making their cable cooler by not having <laughs> Things like icons. No, no, and labels no, 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 no. I see the symbol. It helps me. <laughs> I agree with you. Absolutely. And, you know, USBIF does a, a, a job of advertising and trying to convince people that this is the right way to do it. So there are specific icons for the plug of your cable. There are specific uh, logos for when you buy a cable, the packaging. Okay. And, there, and these logos will tell you whether it's the old USBs like high-speed USB or whether it's super-speed USB or whether it's in fact USB 4. So I've got a great idea. Here's what you do. Come out with um, a, a template for users to make their own little wraparound cable designators that tell it, like when you buy it, you've got the package, it says it's USB 4. Now I've got, I can download your little thing, run it through my little sticker printer thing, yeah, you know, my yeah, labeler, yeah. label maker, and I put it on all my cables and then I'm okay. So Ramon just took that idea and he's gonna go build in his garage a cable, a tape, cable labeling business. Um, <laughs> Not necessarily a bad idea. I would actually do that. I mean, if you had that, I would do it. <laughs> well, I know somebody, you know, that does that kind of stuff. Um, you know, with all the cables he buys, he, you know, labels them. I have a, a you know, multiple boxes. <laughs> sure, we all do. No, we we label we label all the ones that go down under the desk. So when you're crawling under there using your phone as a light, you can go in and go, oh, is this the display? Whoops, no, that was my computer I just unplugged. You want to solve that problem. <laughs> okay, so back to the point. There are icons, and you know, Allison, we, we sent you. Um, hopefully Joe has sent you a yes. uh, a uh, image capture of all our to find um, cable icons. Um, first thing to note, all super speed USB cables that are USB type C can provide USB 4 connectivity. First things first. Say, say that one more time. All existing super speed USB cables, obviously I mean ones that function properly, that are USB type C to USB type C connectivity are USB 4 compatible. Now, you didn't have to go buy a USB 4 cable. You probably already own one. Okay, okay so all super speed USB type C cables, cables are USB 4 are, compatible. Okay. Now, USB 4 offers 20 gigabits per second and a new higher 40 gigabit per second solution. Okay. The existing cables are compatible with the USB 4 20 gigabit per second solution. Okay. Out of the okay. box. Now, uh, the really cool thing about this, I'm even talking about the original super speed cable that you might've bought that was rated at five gigabits per second. Oh, really? Oh, really? Huh. So. <clears throat> There's a technical simplification for you. As long as you know the cable is a super speed cable, you've got USB 4 connectivity with that cable. So I've seen the, uh, I've got a Caldit TS3 Plus dock, and on the back of it, it says SS. Mm -hmm. Next that's, that's, super that's the speed. super speed symbol. I don't remember ever seeing it on a cable though. So there is a little icon that has a little SS with the trident. Okay. And there are three versions of that that are labeled 5, 10, and 20. Okay. Now, very early on, there were ones that said SS with the Trident that didn't have a number. Uh-huh. And that was back in the day when we only had five. Okay. The, but you're saying those still would work. The, yeah. Those would still work with USB 4. At 20 gigabits per second. At 20 gigabits. That's fantastic. Now, why okay. does that work? The geeky answer is that we made the devices and the hosts take on more responsibility for some of the signal 
uh, gain control across the cable such that this old cable, which might have been seemed lossy, if you might call it, um, isn't as lossy or degrading when we're running USB 4 operation. Oh, so USB 4 as a signal yeah. interface is um, more capable in that sense. Okay. So it works with older cables, really cool. Um, we're now in the process of getting all of the 10 gigabit per second and uh, 20 gigabit per second super speed USB cables to move to the new USB 4 20 gigabit per second cable icon, which is new. Okay, does it have a 20 on it? It has a 20 on it. It's got a little nicer design, a little more modern. Um, and um, it it lines really well with our, our uh, certification brands, which you find when you buy the product on the package. Yeah, I wanted you to talk about the, the certifying. So, so one of the things that I read was that USBIF promotes the benefits of products that have passed compliance testing. Mm -hmm. So what are those benefits and how will we know if a product has passed that compliance testing? So all the products that pass are eligible to then uh, use under license the uh, USBIF defined certification logos, which are a nice colorful logo with the USB broadly uh, pre predominant in the logo, plus the speed rating. So it's got the name okay. of USB, so it's simple USB, and it's this fast. It's 20 gigabits per second or 40 gigabits per second, for example. Now this goes on the, the marketing, the packaging of the product when you go to buy it. Um, retailers are able to use this to help educate people that this is what you look for. Okay. okay and good. on the cable, a cable that's certified can also use the certified cable icon that goes with it. And again, it has the number of 20 or 40 and the familiar little Trident, right? Okay. And if your cable's marked with that or your port is marked with that icon, or when you bought the cable, it came with that certification logo, or you bought the computer, or you bought the device, then you know you have something that has gone through very rigorous testing that really aims to verify the interoperability of that cable with other products that are similarly capable or tested. Okay. So, and in fact, this uh, one of our key responsibilities for our CTO is to oversee this uh, program for certification and compliance. Okay, great. Well, so this does tell me our our first goal should not be what is the cheapest cable I can possibly buy. Maybe start with the um, start with the certification and then look for the cheapest cable within that, or right. you know, from a reputable company. Right. And by the way, we're you know, USBIF spends a lot of time working with some of the major retailers to try to educate them and convince them the benefits of, you know, stocking the certified product, right? right Versus right. the lesser untested product. By the way, not being certified doesn't mean the product isn't good. It's just, there's no, no real evidence, you know, proof, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, we've had Ramon uh, sitting in the sidelines here waiting, but he did a, a sp spectacular demo when we were at Pepcom. And um, I, I, hopefully, Ramon, you can explain this for the audio only audience while you're also doing uh, letting people see it in the video. I'll try at least. I mean, at, at, um, <clears throat> I mean what we're trying to do is to actually demonstrate the things that we just talked about. You know, what, we've got a, a laptop from Dell, an XPS 13, which has USB 4 built in. And uh, we're connecting to an OWC dock, which has USB 4 as well. Yeah, o OWC drives. just came out with that USB 4 dock, right? It just came out with the USB 4 dock, yes. Uh, and then we have two drives connected. One uh, that connects over PCIe, so this PCIe terminal. And it's a USB 4 drive. And then we have a USB 3 drive, so it does USB 3 terminal over the thing. So now, and then we're also connecting to a, a 5K display. So we you know we just talked about these three things, which is tunneling PCI, tunneling USB, and tunneling display port. So we're doing all those three things here. 
And I'm actually just going to go ahead and run the video. Unfortunately, for you people on, on audio, you would have to imagine the video running. Um, so I'm going to run the video. So I'm now you know, just demonstrating the video is, 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 is playing. I'll start running uh, a read and a, a write to both these drives. At the same so, time. So, so we're watching we're watching a video going on on this 5K giant 5K display, and you're running a disk speed test on both of those disks. On both of those disks at the same time, and as you can see, I mean, and three go on, on the radio, we actually are moving about 3,000 megabytes per second in reads from the two drives, and we're doing about 2,000 megabytes per second writes on the two drives, while at the same time displaying 5K video. <laughs> so this is all in USB four over a single cable, right? And what I would like to say, you, you've asked about this, how do I know if things just work? You know, with, you know, I've got another, I, I, I buy, you know, these things, these are all brand new, they're all USB 4, they all support USB 4. What I'm gonna do is also connect to a, a, a Note 20 Ultra, which is, does not support USB 4, but it has the Type-C connector on it, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect. So you've just removed the display, or the computer from the display. And from, from the OWC dock, the whole thing. Okay. Right? And I'm gonna go ahead and connect that port. Now this is using, and it moves into Samsung Dex mode. As you can see now, this is now showing the display. Now, obviously the Samsung Note cannot drive a 5K display, but it's running 1080p. Okay. It's running USB 2 and DisplayPort Alt mode. But it just okay. automatically, the OWC dock automatically, you know, they, they exchange information, figured out that it only does USB and Display for alt mode, move into that configuration. And then I'm gonna, and I also have a mouse here, which I can, it's connected behind the dock. So I go to the mouse, I'll go to my files. And we have the dock, uh, internal storage. Let's go to the storage, uh, USB storage here. So now you're, you're connecting to those storage drives that are connected through the dock? Yeah, through the phone. Through the phone. The and as you can see now, I'm playing the same video I was playing before. But now it's playing off of the drive, reading it, and then displaying it out onto the big screen TV. So it's going from the drive through, uh, through the phone. Through the dock to the phone. The phone is decoding it and then sending it out the display to over here. Okay. So that, that's your, your demonstration of how it's negotiating all of this. And I didn't have to worry my pretty little head about it. Right. And so, you know, yeah. Do it, does it support USB? Does it support uh, uh, USB 4 or USB 3? All these things, I mean, the, the beauty of USB from the day we started with USB 1, you know, USB 2, and to today is the fact that we support backwards compatibility, right? And so, in, as, as I think Brad mentioned earlier, it will negotiate to the highest capability that it can possibly connect at and then use the, that capability to, to communicate with peripherals and other things you're connected to, while at the same time providing power as well. So, you know, I'm, I'm getting fully charged up as well, and so I, I the, the the phone won't run out of juice because I'm running all this stuff. Yeah, and that... you were powering the notebook earlier as well. Yeah, and I was powering the notebook earlier with the same with the same thing, with a much at a much higher rate. It negotiated the power levels that each of these things can can handle, and then determines that that's the speed at which it's going to charge the laptop or the phone, for that matter. Oh, that, so this really wrapped this together beautifully. Um, I, I I know that Brad explained it to us in in you know more theoretical terms, but to see it it live and actually happening, Ramon is is fantastic. Bringing those two pieces together, um, I this is this has been great, guys. Um, I really appreciate the time you spent, and I think it's clarified a lot of it for me. And I'm going to be uh, hopefully we'll be a little more informed on uh, what we should get and what how to explain it to normal people. And I especially like the fact that maybe we don't need to explain it to people because it'll just figure itself out. Yeah, I don't know if you want to, I mean, we should tackle the elephant in the room, which is, of course, you know, how is USB 4 and Thunderbolt, you know, relate, right? And just to be clear, for those who will obviously see uh, the Intel branding program around what's called Thunderbolt 4, Thunderbolt 4 is USB 4. Thunderbolt um, 4 is USB 4. It is USB 4. And what Thunderbolt 4 is from Intel's perspective, and again, it's an Intel branding program. It's not a technology per se. All they're really doing is they're trying to help Thunderbolt 3 customers relate to this new move in technology to USB 4. 
So it provides some continuity for those users to go from Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 4. Hopefully they'll get the 4 is the commonality between USB 4 and Thunderbolt 4. But what it also does is Intel is trying to promote like a, um, you might call it an Uber brand, an Uber level of performance. A Thunderbolt 4 product is intended to support 40 gigabits per second. It's intended to support, you know, all the backward compatibility with Thunderbolt 3. Um, it's designed to support, you know, many more displays and things like that. So it's really just setting a very high bar. But a USB 4 product that isn't branded as Thunderbolt 4 will work perfectly fine with it. And in fact, could be just as capable. It's just really so, a choice of branding. So a Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt 4 device is a USB 4 device, but a USB 4 device is not necessarily a Thunderbolt 4 device? It, it can be. It uh, can the, be, but it isn't necessarily. It, it'll probably have, they may have made a choice to maybe, maybe it's only 20 gigabits per second. Right, but if it's Thunderbolt 4, it's 40 bit, megabits right. per second. And okay, you know, still operate at 20 gigabits per second. Sure. Perfectly fine. What were we going to say, Ramon? Uh, you said megabits, and I was just saying 40 gigabits per second. Gigabits. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, very important distinction. <laughs> okay. All right. So, yeah. yeah, no, I'm, I had that in my list of questions and I skipped it. I, I, uh, I Didn't forgot to ask that. I overlooked that. <laughs> yeah, that was one of my favorite things I wanted to understand because it uh, the confusion is there. I, I do appreciate also that I think it's going to be less confusing going forward than it has been. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's something everybody can appreciate. But our favorite thing really is that the connector goes back and forth, to be fair. right? <laughs> you know, I, I, it it's relatively safe for everybody to just take it and plug it together and see if it works. They're not going to damage anything. And they'll be hopefully mildly surprised. It always does what they had hoped it would do. It might not work going HDMI to DisplayPort like you were trying to do. <laughs> but that's how I'm trying to do old technology. So going that, forward, yeah, I think- really kind of mixing old and new. But again, if it's old USB, it will always work well with new USB products. The capabilities of its original intent, yeah. Perfect. All right. Well, I think that's a good place for us to stop. This was this was fascinating. I think I could talk to you guys all day. Really appreciate uh, Brad and Ramon, you coming on. If people want to learn more about what USBIF does, where would they go? Well, the association is USB.org. Oh, there you go. That's easy that's to remember. Pretty easy. All right. Thank you very much for coming, both of you. Thank Thanks. you for having us.